changed my mind, my soul, and my heart forevermore. You did for me what I couldn't do, and I'm so thankful for. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Sports Outreach Ministry Show with your host, the Bishop. Abu Hezekiah Majahadeen. Without further ado, welcome back to the Sports Outreach Ministry Show. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the show once again. It is a lovely day here in East Lake, right outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Hallelujah. North Coast here on the uh, Five Great Lakes Shoreline. Here we are here at StreamingSportsTalk.com. And I am your host, Bishop Abu Hezekiah Mujahideen. And we want to welcome you to the show again tonight. We want to thank you for being here as a, a, a follower of uh, StreamingSportsTalk.com and the Sports Outreach Ministry Show. We thank all of my visitors that follow us up on Facebook and Twitterers and every place else that they're kind of keeping up with us. Email me. You can. Just go to our website, StreamingSportsTalk.com, click on to GospelNewsOutreachMinistry.org, and you can tell me everything you need me to know about you, what you need to know, and what I can tell you about you, if I can help you. But I'm having a real, real rough day today. These allergies here have uh, been kicking in for me. I'm, you know, old man, so old men have a tendency in the springtime to catch an allergy, and it was some fall time catch an allergy. So here I am, my allergy season is in. So bear with me tonight. But without any further ado, no matter how much and what else we do, we always got to give God the glory. Amen. I do nothing without God in it. He is my rock. We he couldn't is my do nothing salvation. without God. Hallelujah. My rock, my salvation, my strength. He's my everything. And I just thank God for being God and God all by himself. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, today for the StreamingSportsTalk.com radio station. We thank you for the Sports Outreach Ministry show here, 7 o'clock every Thursday night with me as the host. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now that you're going to use us on tonight thank to you, perhaps Jesus. bring someone home closer to you oh god or bring them all the way home to you christ so they can have a relationship with a true and living god we just thank you right now forgive us oh lord for anything we may have said or done that was not good in your sight lord we want you to continue to get the glory we want you to continue to get the honor we want you to continue to get the praise bless this show on tonight lord god everything that i say let it be the meditations of my heart and the thoughts that god has placed in our hearts and mind to speak about on today we thank Amen. you, give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Good evening there, brother LG. Good evening, brother. My man behind the scene, Mr. LG, Mr. Sports 360 himself, right here on StreamingSportsTalk.com every Monday night. You can check him out. We just thank God right now for this station. We thank my Brother back there, LG, for being here with me every Thursday night so we can continue to my help. my pleasure, bring, Bishop. Hallelujah. Continue to try to bring someone home. You know, that's our whole purpose here. Our whole purpose is to try to help someone get a relationship with a God that loves them, with a God that's seeking and looking for them, but they got to seek him. He said, if you seek God, he will find you. You see what I'm saying? But you got to seek God. He's, he's not going to just look for you and you ain't looking for him. That's he, right. He ain't doing that. He said, hey, you look for me and I'll find you. Okay? Amen. But anyway, there tonight. for the taking. Amen. Amen. He he's said free. He, he said he's God free, too. Very free. Everything that he deals with is free, except you got one thing you have to do. You have to commit. You have to be prepared. You also have to make yourself ready to receive a God who is a very awesome God. And it's a real frightening thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Real frightening thing. I'm not talking about like boogeyman frightening. It's like, oh, man, it's awesome. This is a mighty God. He is so powerful. You know what I mean? And he can do so many things. It's just awesome. It's just overwhelming. And it's getting frightening. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we are going to talk about are you prepared for God? See, a lot of folks don't understand, you know, you got to be prepared for God. You got to prepare yourself. I was reading some stuff this week and I was going through some stuff at uh, Sunday school when I was at the church. Of course, the church is Miracle of Faith Church. We located at 3880 East 123rd Street, right between Union and Harvard, right off of Land and Crave Avenue, right on the corner. Miracle of Faith Church. You're welcome to come by any time. We are there on Sundays from 945 to about 230 in the afternoon because we got 
our Sunday school at 945. We got our regular service start at 1130, and we usually out of there by 2 o'clock. But sometimes we linger on because the Holy Spirit cares us even more. Then on Thursday night, we have our revival right here the night i'm here at the station they're out there at the church having a revival meeting and tuesday night we have our bible study also taught by me the bishop you can come out and we'll teach you the word of god we'll teach you things that you need to know to get a relationship with god and be able to live as a true christian should and not be ashamed of this gospel of jesus christ amen Amen. because once you know what you know nobody can hoodwink you nobody can bamboozle you nobody can trick you nobody can convince you that you don't know god and you don't live for him amen Amen. Amen, brother. Anyway, I'm going to take a scripture, hallelujah, from the book of Proverbs. Praise God. Of course, Proverbs 27 and 12. Bear with me. Proverbs 27 and 12. 27 and 12. Hallelujah. And Proverbs 27 and 12 says, And a prudent man ceases, foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass it on and are punished. Uh huh. I'm going to put that, break it down to you a different way now. But this says right here, it says the prudent man or the prudent person, let's put that, not just man, I'm going to change it to a prudent person, man or male or female, foresees the danger ahead and takes precautions. Okay. The simpleton, you know what a simpleton is, goes blindly on and suffers the consequences for going through this thing blindly it says that a smart person sees danger and takes precaution now the fool ignores the danger and suffers for it most folks understand when you move you don't do what you need to do you're going to suffer for it it says so be smart we have to know what danger is and be on the lookout for it so that we can take precautions against it that's why I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about being prepared, okay? You know, just in case you don't know what prepared is, prepared is to make ready beforehand. You have to make ready beforehand if you're going to, for a specific purpose, if you're going to be prepared. You wouldn't be a baseball player and not know how to throw a ball. You wouldn't be a baseball player and not know how to catch a ball. You wouldn't be a baseball player and not know how to hit a ball. You have to prepare yourself to be able to play baseball. It's the same thing. If you're a football player, you have to be prepared to play your position. The quarterback can't be the quarterback if he don't know how to throw the football. The quarterback can't be the quarterback if he don't know how to remember and call plays that his coaches have taught him to call and do. You have to prepare yourself. And the the, the linebackers and and the outfielders, all these people have to prepare themselves for each position. That means you have to go and make yourself ready for the specific job which you're going to take if you're talking about playing in the game, okay? That's right. Amen. So it's like, as uh, even as an event, you know, say an event takes place, you have to prepare yourself for that event. You got a family reunion coming up. There's certain things you have to prepare yourself in order for family reunion to come off and jump off as you preparing yourself for it. Okay, you a teacher. You know, you have to prepare your students, okay, for an examination. They just can't take an exam and you ain't even pla- you ain't prepared them for this exam. They say, okay, the teacher comes in, we finna take an exam. Uh, what exam, teacher? Uh, you didn't prepare us for no. Well, you got to take an exam anyway. What good would that do? They don't even know what they're getting ready to take an exam on. You ain't prepared them, so that would be unfair. So my point tonight is, are you prepared for God? Because sooner or later, you're going to meet him again, okay? Everybody got an appointed time to meet their God, regardless of what they think, regardless of what they say, or regardless of how they believe. I'm telling you right now, as the bishop, you going to meet God again, okay? This same breath that's coming out of my mouth is going back to God. This body ain't going back, but this breath is going right back to God. Soon as it leaves this body, it's headed straight to the Father that it came from. This breath is his life. This is this breath is coming, going right back to him. The body is going right back to the earth. It's going to turn to ashes. And it's going to turn to dust. And sooner or later, it's going to just disintegrate and not even be there. Like they say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From the earth you came and the earth you must go back. But that spirit in you, this breath, which travels on the spirit, is going straight to God. To be absent from the body, hallelujah, is to be present with God. Are you ready to be present with God? If you're not, I'm going to help you tonight. Amen? Amen, brother. First Peter, First Peter 3.15, praise God, says, But in your heart, honor Christ Jesus, Lord, as holy. Always being prepared to make a defense 
to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that you have in Christ. Yet, do it with gentleness and with respect. Okay, that's why I ain't come and say, hey, I'm the only way, I'm the only teacher, I'm the only one that know how to get you prepared for God. I'm not. It's a lot of people out there that can get you prepared for God. My brother LG behind the scene, he can prepare you to meet God because he knows God. He's got a relationship with God. And how do I know that? Because I've been with him years, okay? Me and him got baptized together, so I know he's been seeking God all the time. I knew him, so I know he has a personal relationship. What is relationship with God? That's between him and God. Well, my relationship is God. That's between me and God. But I'm trying to help you, my listeners, to get a relationship with God. Our program here is we're trying to help bring somebody home. And what home are we trying to get you to? Home with God, sweetheart. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you home with God. Because, first of all, you ain't going to always live forever. This body got to die. You were born in this world to die. You know, we, we, we promised like three score and 10, maybe 120 at the most. And my bishop, my bishop, okay, he's 81 years old, okay, but he moves around like a 25-year-old sometimes, okay? But his wife always reminds me, say he might have a heart of a 25-year-old, but his body is still 81 years old, amen? <laughs> so tell him, slow down, bishop, slow down, sit down, do something else. But, hey, his mind sharp as attack. Because he loves the Lord and he teaches with integrity and he teaches with honesty and he teaches with truth. So that's why, you know, when you got somebody that's going to give you integrity, that's going to show you integrity, excuse me, and it's going to teach you the truth. You need to receive that thing. OK, it says the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, and the 36th verse says, stay awake uh -huh, at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the son of man. Amen. Okay, amen. I said, why did I tell you stay awake? A lot of people around here sleep. They just, they, they just you just sleep when you think that you're going to be able to bypass going to see God. You ain't going to be able to bypass it. There's no way you're going to be able to not go back and see the father, the creator of the universe of countless universes, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and his father, God almighty. OK, you're going back right where you came from is where you're going back to. Now, are you going to stay? That's what you need to know. Are you going to stay? Some of us ain't going to stay. Some of us go there and when he see you say, hey, I don't know you. OK. And be gone out of my face, okay? But some of them are going to come up here and say, oh, hallelujah, I know you, my good and faithful servant. Come on in and enter my rest, okay? The rest of them is going to the left, which is the brimstone and fire, the lake of fire, which the devil and his imps are going to be dealing with anyway. So everybody following him going to that lake of fire. And a young, little bitty young man, a little minister at my church, he's little Jimmy. We call him Minister Jimmy. He's about eight, maybe 10, maybe 10 years old. And little Jimmy says, it ain't but two places to go. You either going to heaven or you going to hell. It ain't no in between. This boy, 10 years old, he know the Bible say you either going to heaven or you going to hell. There is no in between. There's no purgatory. There's no way station. There's no waiting area until God tell you where you're going. No, you going to heaven or you going to hell. But these scriptures that I'm dealing with tonight is going to help you prepare yourself to be able to deal with God, to be ready for God. If he came today, come on, people, if he came today, seriously, do you think you would be ready to meet him? I question this thing today myself. I say, Lord, I hope I'm ready. I try my best to be ready. I be trying so hard to stay faithful, to stay completely true to your word. But it's difficult, Lord, you know it. But every time I mess up, I'm quick to say, forgive me, Lord. I repent of that right now in the name of Jesus so I can stay and keep my record clean before a living God. In the book of Romans, I was just going through these scriptures. The book of Romans is Romans 13, I think it's 13 and 11. It says, besides this, you know, it says, besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from your sleep. I'm telling you, people, look at it. Everybody kept talking. We in a, uh, somebody called me the other day. What did she say? Um, uh, we in the, uh, 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 some, something she called it. But I'm still, I told her, look, sister, it's not that time yet. This is the New World Order. That's what she said. Uh, the New World Order just started in October the 1st. I said, you crazy, woman. What New World <laughs> Order? I said, God ain't changed nothing. 
It ain't no new world order because if it's been new world order, Jesus is going to have to come and pull that into effect. The devil can't do that. So you, you, you trip and stop tripping on things that you don't know about. But like I said, in the book of Romans says, besides this, know that this, know this, the time that the hour has come for you to wake up from your sleep. Let wake up, people. It's time to get ready for God. For salvation is near to us now than we first believed. It's getting closer and closer and closer every day because things are so messed up. Things are getting so bad that we're going to need a savior to come and correct this stuff. We can't do it. And the people around you can't do it. President Obama can't fix everything. He just one man. He has a whole administration of people he got to go through and help try to make some things happen. And you see our government is playing games right now. You got Democrats doing something on one side, Republicans doing something on the other side, and a president caught right in the middle trying to make something happen. Come on, shutting down the government. What kind of people that would believe in God would try to shut down a government that's helping people who cannot help themselves? Because that's all they're doing. they messing around trying to stop people that cannot help themselves so they can prepare themselves for an election that's years off. But they're already preparing to try to get a president in the office of president before the president's time is even expired. They're working on it right this minute, trying to make the Democrats look bad so they can look good. They say these people don't know how to run nothing. These people don't know how to. Everybody said don't nobody know how to run anything. I'm saying that everybody's asleep. Wake up. The time to get with God is now. You are Amen. not promised tomorrow. Perfect example. Praise God. Missionary Sharon Stubb passed away Sunday. But I seen her Thursday night because I left here to go pick up my wife from the revival that she wanted to go to. That last Thursday, I went and picked her up. But I got there, and I see Sister Sharon. She was in great spirits. Her body looked like it was in perfect shape. She was just glowing so beautiful. But three days later, the breath in her body had left and went back to be with God. We had to bury her on that following Saturday. We don't know when God's going to call us. We don't have no idea when our time is going to expire. So the time to be prepared to meet God is today. Today is the day that you need to prepare yourself to meet God. It says in Proverbs 6, verse 6 through 8, look at the ant. It says, go to the ant. This is what the scripture says. It says, go to the ant, oh slaggard. You know the slaggard, that's somebody that dragging around, don't want to do what they want to deal with, don't know what they want to do. They just willy-nilly, whatever the wind blows, that's the way they go. It says, go to the ant, you slaggard. Consider her ways, okay, and be wise. It says, without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in the summer, and she gathers her food in the harvest okay if you're waiting for somebody to come and grab your hand and lead you down this path it ain't gonna happen because that person's got to be as blind or asleep as you i'm trying to direct you i ain't trying to lead you by your hand i'm trying to give you an understanding so you can go to god and get your own understanding of what it's going to take to be on his team oh yeah you got to get on the team that's why i take this ministry here very seriously this ministry here here at StreamingSportsTalk.com at uh, the Sports Outreach Ministry Show, brought in part by Gospel News Outreach Ministry. I put this magazine together. Excuse me. Allergies again. And uh, we had put a magazine together. <coughs> All you got to do is go on the front of our website at StreamingSportsTalk.com, and there's a link right to the Gospel News Outreach Magazine, and it tells you everything you need to know to get your free copy Download the Bishop's it, Magazine. Download it right there from the website. This one here is Team Jesus versus Team Satan. Okay? I use that term, Team Jesus and Team Satan, because most folks don't understand it's only two sides, good and bad, right and wrong, okay? Left and right, up and down. You got to exhale in order to inhale. You can't do either one without doing the other. If you don't inhale, you can't exhale. Because you didn't pull anything in. The same thing is happening with preparing yourself for God. You got to get what God wants you to have in you in order for him to recognize you when you show up. Okay? Because if you don't come to him as he say you need to come to him, he ain't going to recognize you. And immediately he's going to dismiss you. So you don't want to be dismissed. 
Anyway, no, I was sir. talking about the ant. The ants, if you look at the ants right now, the ants is busy, busy, busy because they know snow season is coming, okay? And ants don't walk around on no snow and in no water. You can forget that. They're going to be in a hibernated burrow under the earth until springtime come again. But they're going to have enough food down there, okay, to keep them and tie them over to the spring breaks, okay? Otherwise, you're going to see them in your kitchen, you're going to see them in your, in your, in your cabinets. You're going to see them in places inside. You're going to see them outside, okay? These ants know what to do. They know where to go find some food. They know how to go store it up in order to be prepared for whatever shortage or famine or any type of shortage of food going to come up. The ant is very well educated by God. God gave the ant everything he needs to know, just like he gave me and you everything we need to know in order to be prepared to meet God, okay? Perfect example. Uh, the tsunami that they had out in the, the, uh, the uh, what was that, the tropics out there close to Japan in that area there, wasn't it? Right. Okay. Anyway, the, the tsunami that they had, the animals in that region didn't get destroyed. And no one had think that was strange. I think it was quite strange to see a whole lot of human beings dead from a tsunami that came in, but the animals knew to go to high ground. Who told them? How did they know? Where did they get the word from? The people didn't tell them, hey, y'all better run. God <laughs> told them in the spirit, y'all need to go to high ground. And everybody that heard God about the tsunami, including human beings, went to high ground and was able to be saved. Okay? It's, just, it's just like the turtles in Hemingway's Hurricane. Did you ever see that book? You know, Go ahead. Down in, uh, down in the Keys in Florida, one of the worst hurricanes that ever hit the, uh, the uh, Florida Keys. Uh, the turtles were all leaving the one side and going to the other side of the island. Because they knew it was time to get up out of that region because danger is here. Okay? It says, the prudent, that includes the animals, the birds, and human beings, foresee danger ahead and they take precaution. I'm trying to get you to see that you're living dangerously if you have not sought out our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as an intercessor for Amen. you. Amen and the intercessor for me. You're living dangerously if you have not given yourself over to God, a true creator of the universe who created everything that is, was, and is to be. you got to give yourself over to him in order for him to give himself over to you and prepare you to meet him. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 27, I mean 24 and 27, I think it says, prepare your work outside, okay? Get everything ready for yourself in the fields. And after that, build your house, okay? That means you want to build a house for God, go get yourself ready. Stop drinking, stop drugging, stop lying, stop fornicating, stop living with some woman or some man in unlawfully and you're not married to him. You understand? Stop lying, stop cheating, okay? Stop doing everything that's against the will of God and start living right. Start living right. Ask God to forgive you no matter what you did. There's nothing that God won't forgive you for if you ask him. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing. Ah, a lot of people, well, I done did so much bad, I can't go to God and ask him nothing because I've been the devil all my life. Well, guess what? Even the devil going to have to come to God and ask God to spare him. Even though he might not be spared, he still might come. Depends on what he does. You see what I'm saying? So don't think that you're so bad, so doggone worse, or, or so uh, unprepared to meet a living God because you did so many bad things. Ask for forgiveness. Repent of your sins. Do a 360-degree turnaround, and don't do it no more. David was quick <clears throat> to say, Lord, forgive me. I ain't going to do that no more. I know I did it. I tell you I did it. I admit that I did it. But God, forgive me. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Forgive me. I'm, 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 like I said, I'm fighting these allergies, but it's okay. That's the devil trying to stop the yeah, word from getting he, out. He don't want it. He don't want this word to get out. Amen. Amen. Well, there's no brother. stopping Brother Hezekiah. There ain't no stopping me, brother. When I'm on what God want me to be on, that's what I'm going to be on. He prepared me to be able to do this show tonight. He told me when I was at the office, he was like, okay, you know you're going to start going through this allergy kick up. And when the sun starts going down, it really starts to hit you really bad. But guess what? You're going to be okay because it ain't but an hour. Amen? Amen. Now, Matthews 25, verse 1 through 46, and i got to paraphrase this one because it's such a long uh, scripture. I don't want to read the whole scripture. Get a note. Write it down. Go check these scriptures out for yourself. Get some paper. Write them down. Check them out for yourself. They're good. My daughter called me the other day and said, Dad. 
what book should I read if I start reading the Bible? I said, well, first of all, I, I would love to tell you to go to Genesis, okay? But Genesis is only the beginning. That's the New Te Old Testament. And there's a lot in the Old Testament that you can't understand unless you got the Holy Ghost in the first place. So my thing is go to the New Testament and start at the book of John. If you start at the book of John, John started telling you about certain things that God himself says in the red. If you're reading it, if you see it in red, Jesus said it. So you go to the book of John. You start reading the book of John and get you some understanding. Because in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son okay and he that believe in him though he were dead shall live okay he said though he said that he that believe in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life okay so <clears throat> people don't understand what that means that means everlasting life it means you're going to go and be with god for the rest of your life that's everlasting life. The body that we're in will be glorified when the time comes because he will give you a glorified body. Right now, this body ain't glorified. This body is wrecked with pain and allergies and, and age and, and it's got muscle pains, all kind of stuff on it right now, this very minute. But being God who he is, he get me through it. Amen. As I was saying, Matthew 25, verse 41 through 46, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven... <clears throat> The kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Now, the bridegroom is Christ, okay? I want to let you know that. The bridegroom is Christ. He says, five of them were foolish and five of them were wise, okay? When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil <coughs> with them. Are oh, you hearing me? They weren't prepared. They took no oil with them. But the wise ones took flasks of oil with their lamp. So along with taking their lamp, they took some extra oil. Okay. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. That's what we're doing. Since Jesus ain't showed up yet, everybody thinking they got a lot of time to go on and slack and lag and not get a relationship with a living God. But you don't have that kind of time because before you know it, within a twinkle of an eye, Jesus is going to show up. He said, no man knows the hour nor the day, but he said he comes like a thief in the night. OK, do you know when a thief going to show up when they break in the house? You don't know. All you know is you wake up that morning, your goods is gone. OK, because he's going to come like a thief in the night. OK. He says, you know the story. I don't have to tell you the whole story. If you don't know the story, go to Matthews 25, verse 1 through 46, and they'll tell you the whole story. You know the story. While they were asleep, <clears throat> the bridegroom tarried. That means the bridegroom came and all the slumber and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. So get out, <clears throat> get up, and meet him. <clears throat> Anyway, all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. That's the ones that had oil, okay? But the foolish one said unto the wise one, Hey, give us some oil because we ain't got enough. Our lamps get ready to go out. Our lamps are gone out. Well, guess what? He said, Hey, we can't give you none of our oil because if you give us our, give us, yo, we can't. If I give you my oil, then I ain't got enough oil for my lamp. So you should have brought some oil. You should have been prepared, okay? You should have thought that we might wait a little while for Jesus to come. So while we're waiting, we prepare ourselves. We read the word. We go to church. We fellowship with one another. We find ways to help bring somebody to Christ. We find ways to testify. We find ways to give someone our testimony. We find ways to show that God loves us by what we say and do every day, not just when we're at church. Not just when we at Sunday school, not when we just at Bible study, not when we just on the radio ministry. Every day, we let somebody know just how good God is. Amen. Anyway, Matthew twenty four and forty four says, "Therefore, you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect." I'm trying to help you be prepared right now for jesus i'm trying to help you understand that jesus our lord and savior is coming back just like he left on that cloud he coming back everybody say yeah that's a fable that's a story that's an allegorical that's this that's that oh well any way you want to look at it i'm just saying he coming back how do i know he said it why do i believe it because he said it 
Okay? Everything else has come to pass just like he said. Everything that has happened in your life according to God's will has come to pass. What makes you think that the rest of this is not going to come to pass? It's all going to come to pass. You must be ready. John 16, 33 says, I have said all these things to you, okay, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations just like I'm having today, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This was the the, the apostles and Jesus was telling the followers, you just got to understand, I come to tell you these things so you can be at peace. I need you to find a place in your heart for God. Don't be running away like Jonah did and not doing what God has called you to do. God is calling you today. God is asking you, daughter, son, come unto me and I will give you rest. You need something? You go to God. Quit going to your friends and your neighbors and the people down the street in your job. Every time I turn around, somebody got their hand out at the bishop at the church. Pastor, can you help me? Well, look here. Go to God. Stop going to the pastor. The pastor is there for you without a doubt. And I ain't saying don't go to your pastor. Don't talk to your bishop. Don't talk to your ministerial leaders. Do. But don't look for them to be the provider. Look for God to be the provider who will provide for you. And I tell you, he will do this every time. Amen. Amen, brother. 22 and 3 says, The prudent sees danger and they hide himself. But the simple person, he continue to suffer for it. Don't be a simple person. Don't continue to let your life go without hope. Don't let your life go without someone or something in your life that's greater than you. And that's not a person. The only thing greater than you is God. The only thing greater than me is God. Only thing down here that's greater than us all is God. And the spirit of God lives just like it did from time immemorial to right now. <coughs> enemy trying to stop me. Just just understand. The enemy is trying there right is, now. Folks. The enemy is trying right now to stop me from giving you this word. I know it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway. He says, but the ones who endure to the end, all right, you got to endure to the end. That's Matthew 14 and 23. It said 24 and 13, 24 and 13. Yeah. But the ones who endure to the end, okay, going to be saved. Now, that means you got to stay at it. You just can't stop. And for one minute, you cool. And the next minute, you're right back to doing the same things you were doing in the world. No. You have to continue to press your way through. You got to press on, press on, press on. No matter what's going on around you, no matter what your friends are doing, no matter what your family members are doing, no matter what your loved ones are doing, you got to have a relationship with God. Me eating steak ain't going to make you fat. Okay? Me having a a, a turkey in my oven ain't going to give no food to your house. Not at all. You got to go to God for yourself so he can put a turkey in your oven and you have your own. You got to go to God so you eat your steak and you can get fat. Whatever the case may be, you still got to do it for yourself. No one's going to do it for you. Not a soul. So my point tonight is, are you prepared for God? If not, say this little prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior right now. I know I'm a sinner and I know I need your help. Do it, Lord. Come into my life right now. Forgive me, Lord God, for anything I may have said or done that was not good in your sight. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord God, in my unfaithfulness. Help me, Lord God, in my doubt. Help me, Lord God, in my weakness. Help me, Lord God, in my shortcomings. And give me the power to be able to follow you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name I pray and I ask it all. Amen. Amen. If you said that little prayer, guess what? You just made a connection with God. He's going to come to your life. He's going to come into your life. In many ways, he's going to send people around you to be able to help you be encouraged to keep on pressing toward God, who is the higher calling in this life. You got to keep on pressing toward that higher calling because if you don't press toward that higher calling, how are you going to get there? You got to do it. You got to pick up your feet, pick up yourself, pick up your mind because the battlefield is right here. You don't see Joyce Myers tell you. The battlefield is in your mind. Every time you turn around, something in your mind, I don't need to do that. Yes, you do. I don't want to do that. Well, do it anyway. 
Because when you start doing things for God, guess what? He right in turn start doing things for you. You start making a way for God, God start making a way for you. Before you know it, you're standing right in the midst of a wonderful blessing, and you're wondering how you got there. Don't wonder. Don't think it's strange because tribulation still going to come. You're still going to get persecuted. You're still going to get ba- you still gonna have bad days. You're still going to get sick. You're still going to have things happen to you that's not going to be pleasant. But guess what? That don't mean you ain't with God. That's what the problem is. Most folks don't understand when bad things happen to them, they think, well, God did left him. God ain't left you. You left him because if you keep on pressing, he's going to take you through it. Anytime a storm comes into your life, that's all it is is a storm. So if you're going through a storm, you've got to do exactly that. Go through the storm or stand and let the storm go past you. Either way, you have to endure to the end. Matthew uh, 24 and 13 says, but he, the one who endures to the end, will be saved. Amen. He Amen. said, therefore, stay awake. Hallelujah. This is 2442. Stay awake, for you know not, okay, or what day the Lord God is coming. But he's coming. As sure as I'm sitting here talking to you, the Lord God is coming. Amen. Amen. Romans 12 and 1 through, I think it's 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you. Therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, did you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your reasonable spiritual worship. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, that by testing, you may discern what is the good and perfect will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect to God okay amen I paraphrase it a little bit so don't get I don't get all technical and I don't get I'm not changing the word of God praise God I'm not I'm just trying to give you an understanding of this word and how you have to prepare yourself for God he says I appeal this is this Paul saying in, in the book of Romans I appeal to you therefore my brothers and my sisters by the mercies of God and God is nothing but love and mercy. So therefore he's prepared you by the mercies of God that you present this body. Hallelujah. As a living sacrifice, give up the things that this body want. It want to smoke. Stop smoking. It wants to drink. Stop drinking. It wants to lie. Stop lying. It wants to fornicate. Stop fornicating. It wants to cheat. Stop cheating. This body does what you commanded to do. And long as you are commanded to do it, it will cease to do it. Okay, amen. He said, transform. Don't conform. Don't conform to what they want you to do to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You have to put new stuff in it. The old things will pass away and all becomes new once you are in Christ. Old things pass away and all becomes new. So how do you get to be new? You have to go to Christ and he will make you a new creation, totally new. The person that you used to be, you will be no more. Once you get saved, guess what? You walking in the Holy Spirit now. You might not have received the Holy Ghost yet, but you're still walking in the Spirit. And if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, all you got to do is tell you, Lord, Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I don't want part of it. I don't want many feelings. I don't want to get full to the point I don't think I need to get filled no more. I want to stay full. That means I go and get a feeling every Sunday. I get a feeling tonight here, Thursday night here at this radio station. I get a new feeling. God fills me with the new spirit, fills me with some more encouragement, fills me with some more hope that I may be reaching one or two souls out there. If you know that I'm reaching you and you want to communicate with us, you can call me here at the station. The number is 216-672-4300. I would love to hear from somebody on tonight to let them know that we are being heard. I know you don't want to pick the phone up, but pick it up anyway. Give us a call, 216-672-4300 on the station tonight. And I'm asking the question, are you prepared for God? Call me and tell me if you're prepared. And if you are prepared, call me and tell me how. Help some of our listeners. Give them your testimony on how you know by you being prepared to, to receive God if he calls you on today. How did you do it? How did you get yourself in a position to be prepared for God? Amen. Amen. Matthew 24 and 36. But concerning that day and that hour, no one knows. If somebody come and tell you tomorrow, oh, yeah, the world going to end in, in 24 days. Well, who told you? Okay. Jesus don't even know. So how you know? Don't believe him. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, which is Jesus, but only the father. Only God knows when he's going to call us 
out of these last and evil days. Amen. Amen. The book of Ezekiel 38 and 7 says, be ready and keep ready. Be ready and keep ready. And you and all your hosts are assembled about you and be guarding for them. It's like I was teaching uh, 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 Sunday school Sunday and we were talking about uh, Gideon. Uh, Gideon was one of the judges, hallelujah, in the book of the Bible, in the book of Judges. We talk about Gideon. He's about the fifth uh, judge of Israel. Anyway, Gideon didn't want to be, okay, uh, that judge at the time. But after his father passed away, okay, someone had to take the mantle of God to guard the people of Israel who was always backsliding. You know, that's what we all do. We're good for a minute. We're good for 20 years. We're good for 10 years. We're good for five. We're good for 40. We're good for a few minutes, but we slide right back to that way of the enemy because we think that we can do that. But anyway, the story of Gideon, you know, gets to the story. Gideon had to go, and he had to go and fight to keep Israel from going back into abject poverty and slavery. Anyway, Gideon was told to go to all the tribes of Israel and gather up some men to go and do this fighting. Well, guess what? He when he talked so good, he gathered up 32,000 men. And he come back to God and said, God, I got 32,000 men. God said, that's too many. I said, what? He said, that's too many. I, I, I can't show my glory if I let you go and we'll fight this battle with 32,000 men. Take them down to the river, and we're going to thin them out. <clears throat> so he took them down to the river, and uh, he told them, all of them that drink and lap like a dog, we're going to dismiss them. And all of them that lap, get down on their knees and put their hands and cup it up and drink out of their hands, we're going to let them be our warriors. So when it was all said and done, out of 32,000 uh, God had whittled it down to 10,000 because he told uh, they told a group before they went to the river, anybody scared or fearful, y'all can go home. Then looked around, it was 10,000 of them left. He said, now this 10,000, take them down to the river. So he took that 10,000 down to the river and told them to drink. Everybody lapped like a dog, he sent them away. By the time they finished drinking water, it was only 300 men left. Can you imagine that? Here you had an army that was 32,000, then it whittled down to 10,000 because he had a lot of folks scared and afraid. So he said, I wouldn't know scared and afraid, folks. Whittled down to 10,000. By the time they finished drinking water, it was only 300. But look, look at God. See, this is what makes this story so beautiful. God took uh, 32,000 men of troops to fight a war, whittled them down to 10,000, then whittled them down to 300, okay, to go fight these Amorites or these Moabites. I'm not sure I have to get, read it, look it up again. I know it's the Amorites and Moabites anyway that he had to go and fight. But his tactic was so awesome, okay, because they raided this troop, this, 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 this uh, 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 army, okay, which was the Amalekites. Or, yeah, the Amalekites. He raided this army, and they was yelling and blowing horns and screaming so loud and so fierce that the enemy started killing themselves, can you imagine? It was nighttime. They had torches, and they covered from all sides, screaming and yelling. They must have thought it was 32,000 men. It was only 300. But they were so confused, and the Holy Ghost and God was with, excuse me, with them that those 300 men defeated the entire army to the point where the king, okay, took off and tried to go hide himself with some relatives that was part of Israel's family as well. And he ended up getting killed also, okay, because he's trying to hide himself. But yet and still, it show you that God, when God is on your side, you don't need a whole lot of people. When God is on your side, you ain't got to worry about no defeat. You're going to be victorious. That's what Gideon found out. Gideon found out that he was going to be victorious in God. But he messed up, like we all do. Okay, he messed up. He went and gathered all the gold and all the silver and, of course, all of the, the spoils that they had won from the fight, and he brought them back, and he made this ephod. Now, ephod is like a, a, a big old chest, okay, or something to hold all of these, these riches in, and he put it on display, okay, because he called himself honoring Israel by putting this ephod on display. <coughs> but what it did, it caused them all to forget how they won the battle, okay? If it caused them to forget. He started marrying 
different women. He man must have married 70 different women. He had 70 different sons. He was just marrying and marrying and marrying. All these women, he had concubines, and he had uh, uh, wives. And he had all of these children. This man had 70 sons. 70 sons. Now, anybody that was wise and that could see that you already messed up. You don't know what to do. You're confused, okay? And you don't have no idea how to lead nobody. But he messed up, Gideon did, because he didn't leave no successor. He didn't tell no one who was going to follow. Moses left who? Joshua, okay? Uh, Elijah left what? Elisha, okay? And so on and so on. And Jesus left the 12, okay? But if you don't make no plans on who's going to succeed you, you're leaving a problem behind you. It's the same thing with most families out here. Most black families do not realize that they need life insurance. Somebody needs to have some life insurance on family members, and the family members need to have life insurance on themselves, and somebody needs to know what that policy is when it comes time. Why? Because nine times out of ten, I have been to so many funerals, so many funerals, where the family didn't have no way to bury the person that died. Why aren't you prepared, people? Because you don't believe your day is coming. But it is. Just as sure as I'm sitting here, God is coming back and correct this evil and corrupt society and world we're living in today. He's going to correct it. Don't nobody want to see this for the next time in memorial? Who wants to go through this to think that their grandchildren is going to go through a society like this that wants to try to shut down the government, embarrass the president, and keep everybody from getting help when they need it? You need help? You need to call someone. You need help? You need to reach out to see if God can send you the help that you need. Ask God to send you help. He'll send it to you. He'll tell you in your mind what you need to do. And when you hear it, don't be afraid. Don't think it's strange. He's telling you separate yourself, remove yourself, come from amongst them. That's what you got to do. You can't be on God's team and be on the devil's team at the same time. You can't play both sides of the doggone team. You can't be on this team and that team at the same time. How can that be? You're going to be on the Browns and then you're going to be on Cincinnati. How are you going to play both teams? You cannot. It's not normal for you to try to play on both teams. So most folks ain't seeing that you got to choose a side. You got to be prepared. And while you're choosing a side, you prepare yourself to be on the side that you own. So when it comes time for you to defend what you need to defend, you got your word and you can defend it. Amen? Amen, brother. Hallelujah. It says here also um, in Matthews, okay, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. We're going to go all the way back. I'm saying, oh, yeah, Ezekiel. I left you at Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel 38 and 7. It says, be ready and keep ready. Okay? That's what you need to do. Now, Hebrews 11, 7 said, by faith Noah, okay, being warned by God concerning events that was unseen, what did he do? In the reverent fear, he constructed an ark for the saving of his household. Okay? By this, he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness that was to come by faith. All right? Noah had to do some things because he was warned by God. Acts, it says there are many others, words, he bore witness and continued to exalt them, saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Acts 2 and 40. You got to save yourself from this crooked generation. You got to do it. You got to save yourself. No one else can save you. I can help you. I can show you. I can direct you. I can teach you. I can instruct you. But you got to receive this thing in order to be saved for yourself. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Now listen to this. He says, enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are very few. Consider yourself right now to be in a chosen few of people if you're following God. A chosen few, a small remnant that really believe God is who he is and going to do what he says he's going to do. Because it's hard. The gate is wide. Everybody wants to be on the, on the wide street so they can see everybody know what's going on. But that little narrow path, don't nobody want to go down it because they're like, ain't nobody on this road. Why are they going this way? I don't care if ain't nobody on the road but me. I go to Sunday school, 
I don't care if don't nobody show up at Sunday school but me. Praise God, I want the Sunday school to be full, and I want to have children's Sunday school and adult Sunday school and teenager Sunday school. I want all of that, yes, but God hasn't placed that in our ministry yet. As soon as that come about, I got teachers already lined up to take over these different departments, okay? But I'm ready, okay? No matter what, I'm ready, okay? And I'm still preparing to be ready er every day, okay? I'm telling you. Proverbs says, the horse is made ready for battle the day of battle. But the victory belongs to who? The Lord. Okay? You can prepare yourself, but you're only going to get victory because it's God's victory that's being taken care of. It's God's victory that takes you where you need to go. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We are still uh, trying to let you understand that the message tonight is so important of you being prepared to receive God for yourself. You have to... Save yourself from this crooked generation. You got to do it. You got to know that the way is not easy. You got to enter through the narrow gate. The gate is not wide. Everybody ain't running to God. Folks is running away from God. They're doing everything but run to God. My advice to you as a prudent person is to see this danger that you're headed for before it happens. Because once you hit that oblong box, it's too late. You can't repent once you're dead. You can't confess once you're dead. You can't ask God anything once you're dead. You have to go and be administered. You have to go and be judged. You have to go and receive whatever you have accomplished down here on this earth, be it for God or for the devil. You're going to reap what you sow. Simple as that. Ain't no way to get around it. You're going to reap what you sow. The book of Luke. Luke 21, verse 9 through 36. And I'm going to paraphrase this one too. It says... And when your heart, when you hear wars uh -huh, and rumors of war and tumultuous, don't be so terrified. For these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Man, it ain't going to take place. Boom, it's just like it's going to be the end. No, some tribulation still going to go down. This he said to them, nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquake in various places, famine and pestilence. And there will be terror and great signs from the heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up into the synagogue and to the prisons and to every place else they can, okay? And you will be brought before kings and governors for the name of what? Jesus for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. This will be an, your opportunity to bear witness. Take me. I'm ready. I'm going to bear witness that Jesus is Lord and there's none other. I'm going to tell you why because I have personal experience from what happened to me in my life that I called on every deity that was out there that I was affiliated with when I was coming up in this life. I called on all of them. I called on Allah. I called on Vishnu. I called on uh, uh, Bahala Allah. I called on all of them. None of them showed up but Jesus. Not Thank one God. of them showed up but Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you hear me? Not one of them showed up but Jesus. And when I called on the name of Jesus, peace that surpasses all understanding came upon me and he saved me from myself. He saved me and let me know I have a work for you. I've been waiting on you, but you have to call on me before I can come. I just can't show up and you ain't asked for me. It's like somebody showing up at your door and you don't even know they're coming. Here they're going to show up at your door telling me, hey, I'm looking for you. What you looking for me for? You know, and why you here this hour of the day? I ain't looking for you. What's up? You know, I'm busy right now. You got to leave here because I got something I'm doing. But Jesus, he said, I'm not coming unless you call. I'm not going to help you unless you ask. I'm not going to open up no door unless you knock. He says, knock, and the door shall be opened. Ask, and you shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. If you don't do none of these things, what you trying to get something for? You see? Amen. Amen. Anyway, he says right here, amen, in Matthew 27, verse 62 through 64. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests, and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how this imposter, okay, that imposter talking about Jesus said that while he was still alive, after three days, I will rise. They called him an imposter because he said what he was going to do and he did it, okay? Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day. So they scared now, lest we, his disciples, go and steal away his body and tell people, 
He has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. Well, that brings me to my point right here. Amen. Hallelujah. It says right here in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 19, verse 20 and 21. It says, hear counsel, receive instruction that they might be wise in the latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Well, I'm counseling you right now in the Lord. I'm telling you right now, you must know that you know what you know and stand on it. This man, Pilate, was a, uh, a Roman pre- uh, uh, procreator in Judea who was uh, recalled by uh, Tiberius, okay, uh, and uh, banished to Vienna, uh, Vienna, where tradition says he committed suicide. The man committed suicide, all right? But listen what happened, why he committed the suicide. The man who sinned against consciousness, that means you sin against your own consciousness. You know I'm telling you the truth. Your consciousness just told you the bishop is telling me the truth. I should receive this counsel and I should receive this instruction and do something about it. But anyway, the man who sinned against his consciousness, what a different story <laughs> would be if Pilate had obeyed his, amen, if Pilate had obeyed his own consciousness and also had followed his wife's intuition and advice. Pilate fell, uh, held his office for some 12 years and by the condor, uh, 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 com- conversions and the cruel government caused himself to be hated by both the Jews and the Sumerians. His first name was Pontus and Pontus means belonging to the sea. His name was Pontus Pilate. Pontus Pilate. He said the arm with one dart. Pilate is armed with one dart. Amen. Amen. Uh, so he says, what a man he is, uh, he said, what a man he was for shrieking responsibility. He shirked his responsibility, okay? He knew he, he could have fixed that whole situation, but he shirked it. He turned Christ over to the Jewish authorities, according to John 18 and 31, and then to Herod, according to Luke 23 and 7. When Jesus Christ returned to him, he posed and inflicted a minor penalty on him, Luke 23, 23 and 22. He could not, he said, he could not silence the crowd or the mob for the blood of Christ. He couldn't do nothing about it. He directed attention from Christ to Barabbas, okay, because Barabbas was a murderer, a killer, and a, hey, a committed murderer and a killer. Too. And he confessed to all these things, according to Matthew 27, 17. And when he died, he cast and engaged a hypocritical ceremony. This man, you know, he, he just made a mockery out of the Christ's death, letting his soldiers pierce him in his side and, 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 and taking his garment and splitting it up and, and putting it in a lottery and all kinds of things. Says so some authorities affirm. All right, praise God, that the name Pilate also means Pilus, a felt cap which is worn by the slaves as an emblem of liberty. Amen. Anyway, we got about two minutes. I just wanted to lay those things on you right quick, and we're going to go to the last scripture here. It says, in Matthew 5 and 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to see God? Will you be ready when he calls? Will you have taken Okay, and made the right choice. You got that chance today. Make the right choice, people. Let someone know just how much you love God. Go to church. Find a church home. Find a Sunday school, a Bible study, a a, a, a missionary. uh, Go do something that will cause you to do a work for God. Amen? Amen. And it came to pass that while we were sitting here, we were all thinking about how wonderful God is. And I just want to know how good he is to me. And I thank you. I didn't think I was going to make it through tonight's show, but I thank God that I did make it through the show. I need to sneeze a couple of times. I coughed once, but I thank God that he's still here in the mix of what's going on here at StreamingSportsTalk.com. So we want to thank you for being on our show, being with us tonight, or being here at the show and listening to the program on tonight. I hope you got some out of the show tonight that can help you to get yourself prepared to meet God. Because one day, you're going to have to meet our living God. You're going to have to meet our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You have to be ready because when he sees you, he needs to know you. Otherwise he's going to say, hey, leave me. I don't know you. Okay? Get out of my face. Or he's going to say, 
Oh, well done, my good and faithful servant. And he's going to enter you into his rest. Amen. So without further ado, we want to thank you and bless you for being a part of the Sports Outreach Ministry Show here at StreamingSportsTalk.com. I am your host, Bishop Abu Hezekiah Majadine. I had a great time tonight. LG, thank you, brother, for thank always you, being up, back me up. and right I'm there blessed to be here with you, brother. Hallelujah, man. I'm we got a wonderful, wonderful thing going on. God, we just thank you. We bless you. We glorify you right now for this show. Bless everybody that heard the show, Lord God, and all those that wanted to hear it and could not. Help someone get saved on today, Jesus. Find them in that place of hurt, that place of pain, that place of broken down, and lift them up and give them peace. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time here at StreamingSportsTalk.com at the Sports Outreach Ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. And have a good evening. Good evening.